Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a wavetable instrument in the new Contact 6 from Native Instruments. There isn't too much documentation on Contact 6 yet. I wasn't able to find a getting started manual or user manual, um, but I figured it out. It's pretty easy, so I'm going to show you how to do it. So anyways, I have Contact 6 open. You can double click here to create a new instrument. You open up this uh, edit mode button, and here is where you choose your source. So you know, before the release of Contact 6, you'd have Sampler, DFD, and all these different types of machines that are used for things like, you know, um, you know, keeping a sample of the same length even though it's changing pitch, or mapping a beat, um, which is done a little differently than mapping notes, which is what you'd use Time Machine for, um, or loops too as well. We have Wavetable, which is how we're gonna use Wavetables. So, this is where you have the controls. If you want to actually add a wavetable in, you need to go to your mapping editor. Move this to the side. And usually here you throw in your samples, map them across the keyboard for different velocities. Um, but what you need to do here is you need to grab a wavetable. So I do have some that I created for one of my Ambitronic packs. Just three for, I think, my Xverse Serum pack that I used. And I'm going to grab this Juno 106 Square Wave one. Now, if you're wondering how I made these, um, I'll show you a little bit. Um, how I did in a sec, but um, I used X for Serum to do it. Now there's different ways to do it. Um, I'll put some links in the description so you can see how to create wavetables, but overall it's it's a very simple process, so uh, don't get too stressed about that. But in terms of what you do in contact, you grab it, just map it across the whole keyboard, and then play some notes. Let me just turn up my uh, volume here. Alright, so at this point you, you have a working wavetable instrument, so you know, depending on what you want, you might be done at this time. So now, just to make the instrument a little more realistic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of tack. Um, with this particular wave sample, um, I noticed that it's a little clicky, so it's probably not done perfectly. You might be able to hear that, so I'll add like a millisecond of attack. Which isn't really noticeable as an attack, but it takes away the click sound. I had some release just to make playing a little more nice, I guess. So yeah, um, now in terms of position, what you can do is you can grab that. If I hold on a note. That just sweeps through the different uh, wavetable positions. Now, if you don't know what a wavetable is, I'll, I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see. But basically, you can think of it as a plane in 3D. And then if you take a slice in 2D along that 3D plane, you're going to get some kind of wave. When you move the position, you're essentially moving what slice position you're taking of that 3D plane. Um, so it's, you know, it's really just a list of waves um, that you can sweep through, and it's just helpful to map it as a 3D plane. But anyways, that's besides the point. So if I want to just kind of illustrate what position does and how you can use it, you know, in a less annoying way. Of course, in your instrument, you could go into your script editor, and you could script something that corresponds to this, uh, to this position knob. I don't know if there's anything in the new KSP version of how to reference this, but I bet... Um, they have it mapped to some kind of parameter that already exists. Maybe not. We'll see. But in terms of what you can do for now, you can just throw on an LFO and map it to the position. Move this I can go down here and I can look at my wavetable uh, LFO. I can change the frequency. I can change the units to quarter notes. I can do quarter notes. Yeah, that's that's really it. Anything else is essentially just, you know, what you would normally do in a contact instrument. They do have these form, phase, and phase, I'm guessing this is random, uh, the, the note at the bottom here, you notice it's actually the same for these. Um, so I don't know if they forgot, <laughs> forgot to put in the note for that or they just 
they didn't feel it was necessary. Um, but phase is essentially the start position of your, your waveform. I personally don't hear a difference there, but it's, it's essentially shifting the loop point of that wave. Um, so instead of starting at you know, a certain zero, at a zero, um, you could start at the end of the sample or like somewhere in the middle, and then it'll loop from that point instead of looping from zero. That could be the reason why I had clicks. Maybe my wave didn't start at zero, so I could fix that by doing phase. Um, I'll have to look into that more. Phase randomization, which I'm guessing this is what this stands for. Uh, you can you know add a little bit of uh, fluctuation to the sound of your wave. Again, I don't think I noticed a difference. Maybe if I turn this off. I'd have to experiment more with different, more obvious waves. Um, in this particular situation, I'm using, you know, a sample I took and converted to a wave. If I were to use something more traditional, like a saw wave or square wave, maybe it would be more noticeable. Uh, and then for position, they have these different uh, <laughs> controls here, which I have seen in Serum. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to try to pretend I know what all of these are. Um... So I'm not even going to talk about them, but they're there if, if you, you know, in Serum I've played around with some of these. I don't exactly know what they do. I just kind of play with them until I get something that sounds good. So there's, there's obviously a difference in these sounds, so, you know, I'm sure that anyone who wants to do wavetables, uh, you, you might already know what that is. I'll put some links in the description. Um, I'm going to do some research and find out what those are, and I'll put it in a link below. So anyways, that's, that's it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe, because I'm going to be covering more and more about Contact 6 and the rest of Complete 12 in my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.